So actually, we as a consumer, are we don't Are you aware of the average? Welcome to another edition of Consumer Voice, the platform that tells you all about your rights as a consumer and how to enforce them whenever you feel they have been breached. Where would we be without our electronic gadgets? Now and then, when there's a heavy storm or other whims of man or nature knocks out the electricity, we are reminded of just how much we depend on these mostly annoying devices. But even when the weather is just fine and electricity is vibrating through those wires, electronic equipment can cause more trouble, expense and aggravation than its inventors could have dreamt of. What is the implication of this for consumers in Nigeria? Today's topic, Consumer Electronics, What You Need to Know, is selected to sensitize you on your basic rights and responsibilities towards ensuring proper utilization of your resources while enjoying your luxurious devices. Still on the program are our usual segment. But first, we'll take a short break and when we return, we'll go straight to our discussion segment. Stay with us. Welcome back. Today I have with me in the studio the Deputy Director, Surveillance and Enforcement here at the CPC, Engineer Sham Kolo. Welcome to the program, sir. Thank you very much, Florence, and uh, thank you, Nigerians, for having me. Sir. Um, the topic today, consumers, electronic products and gadgets. How would you describe them? I mean, can I describe, I mean, there are electrical issues in cars. Does that make that an electronic? Or would you consider a generator an electronic? How would you describe electronic products and gadgets to a consumer? Ah, thank you. Electronic gadgets, uh, products and gadgets. When you say electronic products and gadgets, they are very common things we have with us. They are gadgets or they are products that make the life comfortable, both in the office, both in the, of, uh, what do you call it, in the houses, in the, wherever. Everywhere we have electronic products and gadgets like your television, your fridge, your, your camera is a gadget, huh? and also you have in the car, you have a lot of, the, of them everywhere with you, and even your handset, your phone is considered a gadget, electronic gadget. Yes. Um, one of CPC's mandates is to sensitize the consumer, and by sensitizing the consumers, we're also telling businesses to stand behind their products. We're telling manufacturers, producers, that they must stand behind their products. How the CPC get around doing that? We in CPC make sure manufacturers give out the best of their equipment so that the consumer will not be deceived. If you say your equipment can do this, we make sure it does that. If you say you are giving the consumer one year, two years, ten years warranty on your product, okay, we stand by that. We make sure cons uh, uh, consumer gets the best out of the manufacturer's product. Okay, so the product is fit for purpose. Okay, so while we are saying, while we are telling businesses to stand behind their products, we're also telling consumers to be responsible. Yeah. What are the sort of responsible steps every consumer should take prior to buying a product, an electronic device or product? Just like I've said, I said information is number one. You have to be well informed because there are so many of them in the market is this. And the more you look, the more you get confused. <laughs> So if you are not well informed, you will surely have problem, difficult. Even me, as an engineer, I have problem with that. I take my time, I study the manual if I have any. If not, I Google and get information and see exactly the specifications that I want and the best I want to get from that equipment so that I'm not just throw away my money. And these days, they are not very cheap. So you need to get the benefit or the best use of your money. 
At this point, we have to take a short break, and when we return, we'll be looking at the various redress mechanism available to the consumer, as well as the updates on CPC's activities. Don't go away. Welcome back. If you're just joining us, you've missed out on a serious and interesting topic. But you can catch up by following us on all our other platforms, our website, Twitter handle, Facebook, and of course, you can reach us through any of the contact details being displayed on your screen. So let's look at a scenario. I mean, prior to the break, we've been discussing, you know, our responsibilities as consumers. And I'll give you a scenario. A lady walks into a shop, she buys a boiler or a, a, a heater, and she gets it installed in her house. However, it was not properly installed, and it has, um, her boiler is now damaged. Does that prevent her from claiming uh, her rights under the warranty that she has received from the seller? Yes and no, <laughs> Florence. Um, you know, consumers need to be very careful. And that's why I said information is a very good uh, means of getting uh, out of big problems, okay? Like just what we're doing now. First of all, there's what we call installation conditions by the manufacturer. And it is very important a consumer must abide. It's not a choice. You must abide by these installation conditions. If you don't do that, you will put yourself in a big position, uh, problem, which CPC may not be able to defend for you sometimes. But we go out of our way sometimes to do our best to make sure that you get uh, this uh, uh, whatever redress. All right. Uh, the manufacturers will always make sure that the installation conditions are in the product. It's a booklet. You take time, you read it. And they will also tell you in CPC, we make sure the, the, the manufacturers or the distributors dish out enough information to the consumer when he or she is buying this product. For example, if you buy a flat screen television and you know that your wall is not strong in your room, why for heaven's sake will you install it on, 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 that, on such a wall? These are typical examples we have. Okay, so that brings me to my next question. After sales services, what are the sort of things that a consumer should look out for? What, what sort of services are we looking at when it comes to after sales service? Because there are so many artisans out there, many people calling themselves competent technicians. But how do I know that my wall is not solid enough to hold this TV, you know, if I don't get some sort of after sale care? That is why I said you should always go in for professionals. We also make sure the manufacturers or the distributors in their showroom they have technicians that will advise you. Sometimes they will say, okay, let me, let, let us assign a technician for, uh, to you, to accompany you to your house and show us where you are going to install this equipment. Mm -hmm. That is, that brings us back to the first question. The manufacturer stands by his equipment, by his product. Uh, you understand? Yeah. He wants to give you that confidence. He says, let a technician go with you and go and see where you want to, the environment, because the environmental conditions in this installation conditions, it's very, very important that every uh, a consumer abide by these conditions. It will help them in the on the long run. The example I gave you now is very common in Abuja. Okay, the, the man said I left my house in the morning. The television was fine. I watched it yesterday night. It was fine. And this morning I came back. The television is no more working. What happened? He won't tell us the truth of what happened. Yeah. Not knowing that it was inst installed on a wall that was not strong, and he came back. The television fell off. And the screen face down flat, okay. Yeah. And you not carry that the screen is scratched or it's, it's broken or it's not functioning. What happened? You won't tell us because you didn't ask for a qualified technician or an engineer to help you install this equipment properly, mm -hmm. following the installation conditions. Okay. So this, these are tips that are very important that we don't have to play with as consumers. Mm -hmm. It is important that you go every manufacturer. No manufacturer will manufacture an equipment without the installation conditions. 
and this is very important. Okay. So the after, when all these conditions are fulfilled, you don't have any problem with the after sales service. They will be happy to render you a full after sales service oh, they without. They, <laughs> they will be very happy. They will be happy. You know that. Look, I, 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 I bought this from you. You are the one that installed it. I have this problem. They say, okay, okay, let's come and check it for you. And the warranties are there. Some of them give one year, two years, even free to this day. They give you up to 10 years warranty on the product. Okay, back to consumer responsibility, because I think that this is a very important uh, message to pass out there. How do we care for those products? Should, I mean, how do I know, okay, it's a phone, I should charge it, say, 3, 4, 12 hours as soon as I purchase it? You know, those sort of um, tips. How do I get those sort of tips? First of all, you have to read the manual. It's very, everything, manufacturer's heart, is the way we put it in engineering, the manufacturer's heart is imbibed in the manual. When you so open, everything is there, okay? If you buy a smartphone, a handset, you charge it for maybe four hours before you use it, eight hours before you use it, depending on where you live and also the availability of current. So it's important that you go by this information, all right? The same thing with cleaning. You know, because your house is dusty or you have a house girl that is overzealous to work, you now carry a soft, uh, what do you call it, a rag or sponge, sponge mm -hmm. and clean your screen, you know, in the name of cleaning your equipment in your room. That is a very bad practice. In the manual, is there. Avoid any contact with water. It's there. Don't expose your equipment to sunshine, direct sunshine. Don't expose it to dust. Don't expose it to water. And that is very common. People will use, like I said, the house help you come you are not there you are out do you come back and the tv is no more working or the screen is scratched or it's cracked the water the 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 servet no the, the what do you call that thing sponge. the sponge that you use in cleaning the screen a bit wet which is not advisable the particles of water will fall into the screen below the screen and they will sink into the screen okay and that immediately you know the meaning of LCD? Liquid crystal. When water mixes with that liquid that is inside the screen, you are in trouble. Before you know, there will be a crack on your screen. I just came back and I made crack on my screen. I don't know what happened. That was what happened. So there is need for you, our Nigerian consumers, to tell your housekeepers, your house help, whatever, your wife, your children, not to use a wet rag or wet cloth or wet uh, sponge to clean the screen of your flat screen in your house. This causes a lot of problems. So this is part of the, these are the, part of the, the maintenance tips for your television. It's very important. And the same thing with other equipment. Maybe fridge because it's used to water. You don't have any problem with that. But with flat screen televisions, you need to be very, very careful. Don't use any wet object or uh, sponge in cleaning the television. That if you enter any uh, showroom or anywhere, you want to buy an equipment, you need to be inquisitive. Ask questions. Don't be afraid. It's your money. Hard-earned money that you want to part with. Ask questions. Can you do this? Can you do this? Can I get this from it? How do I add this the current in my area? Some people will buy fridge in the town, in the city. It's working. When you carry it to your place, it's not working. Mm. Two days after or one, one week after, you bring it back to the showroom. They will test it. It's working properly. You go back to your place, it's not working. You know there's a problem. Yeah. Because the current in your area is very low, and in the city, you have full current. So automatically, that product or that uh, equipment cannot perform the way it's supposed to perform. Okay. We're running out of time, so I'd ask my very last question. What's your advice to the Nigerian consumer? Because after all said and done, it's really the consumer that we're trying to protect here. What's your message to Nigerian consumers? Uh, my message to Nigerian consumers, I want them to be very proactive. Seek knowledge, seek information before you part with your money. It will help CPC, it will help yourself, okay? Because a lot of complaints were entertained. Many of it is only due to ignorance. Many of them are ignorant. They don't have enough information. They don't even, some of them don't even decide. They don't know exactly what they want to go in for. They just saw a flat screen, they just saw a nice uh, handset, they just saw a nice uh, a fridge. They just put in their money and it's not meeting up to what they really want to get from it. All right? So my, 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 my message to Nigerian consumers is that we should be very, very proactive. We should seek information, seek knowledge. If you don't know, thank God we have Google these days. You Google it, everything is there. Okay? If anything I want to buy, including car, you Google it, 
What's the petrol cap? These days you have to be careful about that. What's the consumption in the city? The petrol it consumes in the city is different from the one it consumes when you're on the highway. Some people say, I filled my tank and it took me to, yes, but in the city, I use it for only two days. It's clear. And what happened? Because the information is there. In the city, you consume more petrol than when you're on the highway. The same thing with every equipment, like the issue of power I gave you. In the city, the product is working very well. So when you are going for this product, I'm living in social area, I need to work in that area. You, 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 you give some information that will even help the seller to help you so that you will not be missed. Uh, fed or mislead to put in your money in such a product. Thank you very much, Mr. Shamkolo. It's been a delight having you on the program. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Thank you. We'll take a short break, and when we come back, we'll go straight to our other segments. Don't go away. Hi. My name is Chuku Noyenwa Chuku. I kind of had a, a business transaction with a company, McBody's Property. I actually subscribed to the company to get um, a piece of land they were selling at a point. Thereafter, I realized that um, I was dissatisfied with um, what I saw because um, the distance I realized that the plot was on wasn't uh, what I actually bargained for. So I decided to go for a refund. I wrote them on the 2nd of February 2016 and um, after a long while they told me that, uh, that I'm going to get my refund after 60 working days. After 60 working days I didn't get any refund. I went back to the office they told me I was going to get a refund that it was in batches. I went back there I went to the office not fewer than six times and I was getting stories one good day, I was watching the television and I saw people testifying about CPC. So it struck me that I can actually take my case to CPC. I then wrote. I wrote on the 9th of May to CPC. To my greatest amazement, after a short while, I received a call from CPC that my attention is needed in their office. Thereafter, on that morning that I was supposed to have the interview, that company, McBody's Property, they, qu they quickly sent an alert to me and um, there was a dispute about how much they were supposed to refund because they said they were going to take 30% out of the money, which I said no, because they said they were going to have used 60 working days to, you know, pay me back the refund. But it has taken more than 60 working days, going up to um, 100 and some fraction. Then I insisted they were going to pay me in full because they have breached the contract. Then, on that same day, on, a, on the 18th, I came to the office. I was, act, I was told that the, the director failed to come, but they said he's on his way. I was told to come back about, at about 2. I came back by 2, and lo and behold, the director sent an undertaking that he's going to clear the bills. And as a matter of fact, the matter has been completely resolved. I want to give thanks to CPC. As a matter of fact, I was doing what I was doing with some apprehension at the corner of my heart. I was thinking, you know, it will be the normal Nigerian thing. You need to do this or do that. But to my greatest amazement, I didn't know anybody. I never gave anybody anything. Things went smooth and cool. And to the glory of God, I, the matter has been fully resolved. Fellow Nigerians, or you out there watching, I just want to encourage you. Take advantage of this organization called CPC, Consumer Protection Council. As a matter of fact, it is real. What amazed me was that people normally say, hey, forget about it. Forget about it. Did you just be writing letters and going there back and forth and wasting your money and your fear? But I am here as a living testimony. CPC waded in and justice was served. Thank you so very much to the management of CPC. I want to thank uh, the director. She's doing a great job. I must say the staff, they are up and doing. They always take the matter as if it's personal. Please, you are out there. You are shortchanged in any way or form. Take advantage of CPC. Just write to CPC. Your matter will be resolved.
Welcome. It's always a delight to have you join us on our feedback segment. You would recall that earlier this year, the CBC investigated Multi-Choice Nigerian Limited on consumer complaints concerning its quality of service through its satellite television broadcast product, DSTV. In pursuant to that, the council made public its orders to Multi-Choice on the 16th of February 2016 with a 90-day window for compliance. After a rigorous verification exercise, we are pleased to inform consumers that Multi-Choice has indeed complied with these orders. So on this special feedback segment, we'll be bringing to you some feedback in this regard. On Facebook, Kingsley commented, I love CPC. You guys are working. Folusha said, CPC, thank you, but multi-choice subscription should be made pay as you go. I did the G. Joseph also said, CPC, thanks, but what we need is pay per view. Thanks, Folusha and Joseph. But please understand that these are content, broadcast regulatory and competition issues, which are outside the mandate of the council. Competition issue can only be addressed by a competition law, which is currently non-existent in Nigeria. On Twitter, Babajide Fadoju tweeted, We are getting there. Thank you, CPC. Bode Modukwe tweeted, This is good. Yes. Multi-choice to ensure local channels are available when subscription expires. Thanks, Modukwe, but please note the following. According to the Nigerian Broadcasting Code, a pay subscription service shall carry a free-to-air public broadcasting station in its area of coverage free in the public interest. In this regard, Multi-Choice has made the Nigerian Television Authority International Channel available to subscribers whose subscription has expired. Dakbo Sanwo also tweeted, really brilliant work. At Agda tweeted consigning Multi-Choice's compliance with reconnection after payment. The above is not true. They keep disrupting my service even when I pay before subscription expires. Thanks, Agda. Consumers should not hesitate to complain to the CPC if they feel that any of these orders are flattered by the service provider. And rest assured we will look into it. However, customers should first complain to multi-choice via the top free lines available on all networks. And if unsatisfied, please complain to us. Well, viewers, this is the much we can take on this segment. We always look forward to your interactions with us. So until next time, I am NAAB. Bye for now. Consumers, ensure you get value for money. When not satisfied with a product or service, don't just grumble. Complain to CPC. You may send your complaint to any of our eight offices closest to you, or you may email us at contact at cpc.gov.ng. Hope you have enjoyed this program. Remember, consumer is king, because without you, the service providers are out of business. Don't hesitate to come to CPC whenever you feel your rights have been breached. Our contact details are being displayed on your screen. We have eight offices across the nation. Let me take this opportunity to thank our guest today, Engineer Sham Kolo, our Consumer of the Week, as well as all of you out there who have sent us your feedback. We appreciate all your feedbacks. If you have gotten redress or benefited from CPC in any way, please contact us so we can bring you on the program to benefit other consumers in similar situations. That's it from Consumer Voice. Do join us again same time next week. I'm Florence Abebe, your anchor.